Hello friends, welcome to a new format here on my channel. I spent the better part of last week repairing a variety of things that had been lying around in my shelves for a long time and I did that under the restricted conditions of my new basement room using only the most basic tool set. And the material for the first four episodes has already been filmed and I'm now working on editing it and these episodes will be released over the next weeks step by step alongside my normal content. So let's just get to the first repair then. So what we have here is an iPad 3 from around 2012 and this was sent to me by a viewer among other things. Thank you, you know who you are. And even though the former owner was smart enough to buy this red protective case here for the iPad, well, that case obviously wasn't good enough to prevent certain damages. As you can see in the left and right top corner here of the iPad, the digitizer sitting on top of the actual LCD is splintered and the aluminium enclosure, at least at one of these corners, is also kind of bent in probably from falling down. And just a couple of days ago I found out that there is a replacement kit with a digitizer and some basic tools required to swap the digitizers for just $11.99 on Amazon. And I ordered that and I will now try to replace the old digitizer by this new one. And as you can see, the iPad is still electronically working, doesn't have any problems. It's really just the surface of the screen that needs to be replaced. And here are the tools that came with the kit, little screwdrivers, levers and plectrums and also a suction cup. But one more thing that you will need is either a hairdryer or a hot air gun as I'm using it here in this video. And in addition, I also recommend to use safety glasses as, well, the panel already is splintered and will continue to do so as we apply force to it. Because other than in many other YouTube videos on this issue, I'm not going to show you how I replace completely working and physically intact digitizers, but instead I will have to peel off lots of little fragments and shards that are glued to the iPad's surface. So after heating up the glue, along the outer frame under the digitizer with hot air, I start to lift off the digitizer in those places where it is not splintered by help of the little plastic tools that came with the kit. And this is actually the easy part of the job. You have to pay attention not to protrude deeper than five or six millimeters under the digitizer though, that's about one quarter of an inch, or otherwise you might damage the LCD or the Wi-Fi antenna of the iPad. And this is really not too hard at all, especially if you keep the glue warm by repeatedly reheating it with an air dryer or a hot air gun as you cautiously slide along the edges, applying a little bit of pressure from under the digitizer. But that easy part was over once I reached the broken corners of the panel where applying pressure from underneath the panel does no longer result in the panel actually being lifted up because it is shattered into so many little fragments. And I didn't have any luck with the plastic tools prying the little shards off and that's why I tried to use the tip of my Swiss army knife here and well it actually worked quite well. Of course though you have to be extremely cautious not to touch anything lying underneath the digitizer with the tip of that knife. And by and by I was able to free the largest portion of the digitizer so that I could eventually lift it off the surface. And after that I proceeded reheating the glue and prying off the remaining shards from the frame of the iPad with my knife. Again being very cautious not to scratch the now completely unprotected LCD module. And then I decided to simply cut the flat flex cable connecting the digitizer to the rest of the device because in just a minute I will have to take out and flip over the LCD quite awkwardly and the shards or remains of the old digitizer will only be in my way. And with that top panel gone it's now much easier to remove any remaining fragments no matter how tiny and I really clean the entire frame of the iPad and I also clean the workbench after that because we will now work on the LCD and we don't want to get that in touch with the shards which might scratch the LCD. 
But before proceeding, I lift off the little plastic frame around the edges of the aluminum enclosure and use needle nose pliers to bend the enclosure back into the original form. And even though I'm getting very close to the LCD panel with my fingers here, I'm not actually touching the surface, which you should totally avoid. And with that being done, I unscrew the four tiny bolts holding the LCD down with the help of one of the little screwdrivers that came with the kit. And then again, I try to lift off the LCD without touching the screen. But you can also see that there are tiny pieces of dust or glass lying on the LCD surface and we'll take care of that in just a minute. And now you have to put the LCD aside without flipping it around so that the surface doesn't get damaged and it stays connected. We only took this off so that we can unplug the flat flex cable of the broken digitizer module and then of course connect the new one. And in the next step, a small piece of tape attaching the flat flex cable to the connector inside has to be removed. And again, one of these plastic chips comes in handy and don't forget to reapply this piece of tape once the new digitizer is connected. But don't just pull out the flat flex cable. First, there are two levers or locks at the end of these two connectors that have to be disengaged first and then you can free the flat flex cable. And then you can insert the flat flex cable of the new digitizer and close these locks again. And here would be the part where you reapply the little piece of tape. And now you can theoretically reattach the LCD panel, but pay attention not to have any excess flat flex cable looking out of the enclosure. You want to have the amount of flat flex cable acting as a hinge here to be as short as possible so that you can just put down the digitizer flat onto the LCD panel. And the amount that you see here in this footage is actually a little too much. I had to correct that after filming this first take here. And then the next step, I put on a fresh pair of rubber gloves because I don't want to put any of the grease on my fingers onto the LCD or the inside of the digitizer. And I start to carefully clean the surface of the LCD just with a piece of clean cotton. And in the next step, I remove a large transparent sticker that is on the inside of the digitizer and was supposed to protect its surface. Furthermore, a whole range of blue plastic sheets protecting a layer of glue lying underneath have to be peeled off. And checking for grease, dust or any kind of dirt on the LCD or the inside of the digitizer one more time, I align the edges of the frame and the digitizer and I carefully put it down. And now I try to apply pressure all around the frame of the iPad equally. And after having done that for a while, I finally also peel off the sticker on the outside of the digitizer. And now I'd say it's time for the moment of truth. So this looked pretty good at first glance and I have tested the iPad since I made this repair for about a week and I didn't encounter any problems whatsoever. And even though this might be five years old, I think the iPad 3 is still a great tablet well, especially considering that I only paid $11.99 to get a running model. So if you want to repair one of these yourself, you can find a link uh, to this repair kit in the video description. Well, but there's one more thing that I want to take care of, and that is that there are a couple of nasty stains on the backside of the enclosure. And what I just do is take a little bit of universal thinner and a piece of cloth, and I just rub that off, and there you go. So this was the first episode of Vault Repairs. In the second episode, I'm going to show you how I repaired this Pioneer tape deck here from the 1980s. And I'm planning to release that episode within this week. So this time we'll hopefully really see each other again soon.